My name's Jonathan Keneally. That's my name. It's not who I am. I'm Coach JC. And let me tell you how I got here. I grew up on the Jersey Shore. I was raised by a single mom, and it was me, my mom, and my sister. I remember my mom doing everything she could to provide for myself, my sister, and, and our family. I remember myself and my sister at young ages not having any food, almost thinking we were to go hungry. And my mom saying, no, don't worry. All things work together for good. God will provide. At the moment, we didn't understand it. At a young age, we just wanted to eat. It was a struggle growing up. We didn't have much financially, but we fought. We fought because my mom's faith, and she, she would tell us over and over, all things work together for good. For me, going through all of that, you know, I would say my outlet was athletics. You know, I, I loved playing sports, and especially basketball. And I really felt that maybe, just maybe, athletics and basketball maybe were the ticket that could rescue my family from the struggle. And that's what took me out to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to Oral Roberts University with big goals and dreams to play basketball at the Division I level. It was at that time that there was a pretty girl on campus and, and all the boys were chasing her. And, and guess who won? Coach JC. We made bad choices and this young girl gets pregnant. And one thing led to another with a kid on the way at 20 years old, throwing away an opportunity to rescue and save your family from the struggle back in New Jersey where do you go? What do you do? Well, they tell you get married. You know, that's the best thing to do if you get somebody pregnant. So what do we do? We got married and, and, and that didn't end well. Married for a short time and divorced. I'll never forget waking up one day and my wife was gone and my daughter wasn't there. I knew that day that everything changed. And that started an eight year fight of my life to be a father. I had no money. I was in severe debt trying to figure out how to pay attorney bills and, and all the false allegations and accusations brought against me, I, fighting to clear my name. And in tremendous amount of debt, I remember one day specifically, pulling up to the Walmart that day, I was a little discouraged at the moment when I was greeted and told that you're not gonna see your daughter. She, we're not bringing her. I remember feeling empty I remember all these emotions. I remember walking back to my car at the parking lot of Walmart, again, questioning God. I got in my vehicle, I don't remember much. I just turned and went and just drove back to Oklahoma. I was questioning at that moment, would it be better possibly to end my life? And I remember driving my black Nissan, hitting the acceleration, and just wondering, what if I just whip it off the side of the road? I mean, maybe this will make everything better. Maybe my daughter doesn't need me in her life. Maybe, maybe I'm better off not here on this earth. Maybe I don't have a calling or, or a purpose. And all of a sudden, I remember going over 100 miles an hour sirens. <laughs> I look in the rear view mirror, and I'm being pulled over by a police officer. This police officer walked up to the window and knocked on my window. As I rolled down the window, I looked up to him. He said, what are you trying to do, son? Kill yourself? I said, actually, that would be good. I remember that officer saying something that would change my life forever. He said, son, here's what I want you to know. Everything you're going through right now, it had to happen. It has to happen. I remember looking at this guy like he was crazy. And he says, where you're going in life, what you're going through right now, it's just part of the story. It has to happen. And he ended the conversation with, son, please slow down. Don't kill yourself. Don't kill somebody else. And watch out for the deer. I remember at that moment when I rolled the window up and started to drive off, I remember sitting and, and, and marinating on those words that he said. It had to happen. It has to happen. There's, there's going to be a purpose for this. And I remember over the next couple hours as I drove from that point onto Tulsa, how God became real to me. I can't explain it. I don't really know what happened. All I know is that my heart was being healed. All I know is the guilt, the shame, the condemnation, the unworthiness, the, 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 the disappointment, the uncertainty, the anger towards myself, the unforgiveness, the frustration, the hatred towards other people that, that are causing this situation. It all was removed. 
instantly. It was like I was, I was, I was just turned off emotions. None of it mattered anymore. And it was at that moment that the things and some of the things my mom said growing up became real to me. I heard them growing up. We were brought up in church. But it was at that point where I remember for the first time in my life having a true, genuine relationship with my Lord and Savior. Not only did I become a father and not only did I get my daughter back, but I got my life back. And I honestly believe that when God shows up, that he shows up big that all things do work together for good.